the reflex of solidarity at work in Brussels too. The day after the attacks, thousands flocked to the city's designated square for moments of remembrance. Here it happens to be the Place de la Bourse, the square in front of the stock exchange. Here too, as in Paris, the walls speak defiance. And yet with every attack, the mood shifts down as we grapple with the awful reality that this may just be the new normal. This is also new. Security checks on the way into the metro. That didn't happen after 7-7 in London or after the Madrid bombings. It is another layer of scrutiny in a world whose mundane daily routines have already been transformed by the threat of terror. We join the commuters. They don't like us filming here, understandably. And what we find underneath Brussels, the capital of the European Union, is frankly surprising, even disheartening. The five train, right through the center of Brussels, their equivalent of the Piccadilly or Central lines. Today the mood is worse than in a dentist's waiting room. Nervous, empty, tense. People alone with their demons. Another ghost station that we drive through on this ghost train. Now this is mid-morning on a Wednesday in Brussels. I know that the politicians in this city have said that normal life has returned, that there's a great spirit of resilience. But I have to say, it's not an evidence on this train. We finally find someone who is willing to speak to us. It's like a desert here, Ahmed, a waiter told me. People are scared. Not surprisingly, no one here feels protected. Ahmed is Muslim, a son of Tunisian immigrants, born in Belgium, a citizen of this country, feeling increasingly like a stranger. And yes, people look at me in a weird way, he adds. It makes me feel uncomfortable, but I totally understand them. Brussels has long been an alluring mixture of grit and grace. The facades of the famous Grand Place are trimmed with gold. But they're not used to flags at half-mast or to news choppers intruding on their skyline. This city is the latest to have changed, but one can't help but feel it won't be the last.